Please stand as you are able. Blessed be God, most holy, glorious, and undivided Trinity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> Glory to you, Lord God of our ancestors. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. I'm sorry, let us pray. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. <clears throat> Our first reading this morning is a reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people of Israel, The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all your undertakings, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your livestock, in the fruit of your soil. 
For the Lord will again take delight in prospering you, just as he delighted in prospering his ancestors. When you obey the Lord, your God, by observing his commandments and decrees that are written in this book of the law. Because you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and all and with all your soul. Surely this commandment that I am commanding you today is not too hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in heaven what you should say, who will go up to heaven for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it. No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Our psalm today is 26, verses 1 through 9. Let's read it responsibly by half verse. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul, my God, I put trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. In you I have trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love. For they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right. And teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness. To those who his covenant and his testimonies. Our second reading is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother. To the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae, grace to you and peace from God, our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we have heard of your faith in, Christ, in Jesus Christ and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learned from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, <clears throat> and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him, bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts enlighten us and inspire us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Many of us are familiar with the story of Robin Hood, right? English folklore that goes back to the 14th century. Robin Hood is the subject of ballads, tales, plays, <clears throat> and in the 20th century, movies. My personal favorite is the 1938 movie with Errol Flynn in the title role. The main character, who's known as Robin of Loxley, has a band of followers, the Merry Men, a heroine, Maid Marian, and an adversary, the evil sheriff of Nottingham. Robin stands up for the oppressed Saxons against their Norman overlords, who show them no mercy. Many Saxons have lost their land due to high taxes and illegal seizures, so Robin Hood robs from the rich and gives to the poor. And that's why he's so popular. He's a fighter for the underdog, and that makes him a hero, even if he is an outlaw. <clears throat> we just heard the parable of the Good Samaritan, and we're told that a lawyer asked Jesus a question. Now, by lawyer, this is not a secular lawyer, but an expert in the law of Moses, in the Torah. And he's testing Jesus, asking about eternal life. Now, the Torah scholar already knows the great commandment. But to try to trip Jesus up, he then asks, and who is my neighbor? The parable is Jesus' answer to that question. So who are you rooting for in this parable? Who's the hero? The Samaritan? How many people feel that the Samaritan is the hero? Show of hands. Okay. The Samaritan definitely seems to be the good guy. He stops to help an Israelite in need, 
even though there's centuries of bad blood between Samaritans and Israelites. There's also a great risk to himself because the road from Jerusalem to Jericho that exists even today goes through a rugged, desolate area with lots of, of caves for bandits to hide in. It's more of a path than it is a road. So what do you think? Are there any other good guys other than the Samaritan? How about the priest and the Levite? What do you think of them? They were following the law of Moses against defilement. Were they wrong to do that? What about the bandits, the robbers? They beat a man half to death. Are there any redeeming qualities about them? And then finally, what about their victim? It may surprise you to hear who the listeners in Jesus' time would have rooted for and who they would have booed. Who were the people listening in on Jesus' conversation with the Torah scholar? Well, Jesus attracted people mostly from the peasant class, sharecroppers, itinerant farm workers, living a hand-to-mouth existence. Most likely, at least some would have lost their family's ancestral land to taxation, just like the Saxons that Robin Hood was stealing for. And so the crowd's heroes and villains would be very different from what we would think here in the 20th century, or what white middle-class people would think in the 21st century. So let's consider the victim. He's probably the person we're most in sympathy with because he was just an innocent person going about his business. He was most likely a traitor and probably well off. Now in Jesus' time, that would have been a strike against him, the well-off part, that is. Because it was believed in that culture that if someone had more than they actually needed, it came at the expense of others. You know, there's only so much wealth to go around. So there would not have been much sympathy for him from the have-nots who were listening to Jesus. What about the priest and the Levite? Well, yeah, they were obeying the law of Moses, but they would have thought of the priest and Levite as kind of bad guys also because they were part of the religious belief, re- elite. They were, out, they were believed to be out of touch with people's lives. They were a part of the system of taxation that kept people poor. And mostly they were believed to be collaborators with Rome. So that would have been reason enough to have little sympathy for them. But what about the bandits? Surprisingly, they would not have considered the bandits bad people. The bandits would be thought of as their Robin Hoods, with one big difference. Whereas Robin of Loxley was believed to be part of the aristocracy, these bandits would have been landless peasants too. In Jesus' time, bandits would be stealing not just for themselves. Of course, they would keep some, some money for themselves or goods, whatever it was they were stealing, but they would often give money to people just like them. Extended family members, or perhaps people they were indebted to, or close friends. The crowd would have identified with them and sympathized with them. Because in their mind, in the crowd's mind, they would just be evening out the great divide between the haves and the have-nots. But we think of them as villains because we are from a different culture and have a different economic status. Now the goodness of the Samaritan would have been the big twist to the the parable for all his listeners. No matter what their private opinions about Samaritans, the crowd 
What if, what if reluctantly admitted that despite his ethnicity, he was the true neighbor to the victim because of his mercy? That would have been hard for them to take. The real sting of the reading, however, was reserved for the lawyer, the Torah scholar. Jesus very skillfully puts him in his place for trying to trap him. Jesus holds up the Samaritan as a moral example to be followed, a model of someone worthy of eternal life. And he instructs the scholar, <clears throat> go and do likewise. Can you imagine the scholar's reaction? He's being asked to imitate someone that he probably thinks of as a pagan to prove himself worthy of eternal life. The Samaritan makes himself worthy because of the mercy that he showed. The priest and the Levite make themselves unworthy by their lack of mercy. And so does the scholar because of his hardness of heart toward Jesus. Knowledge of God is good, but doing what God asks, having mercy for all, is much better. And that's what the Samaritan does. He, in fact, stands for God in the parable. The sting of this story isn't limited just to the scholars, to the scholar. The listeners are asked to imitate God as well. With the ve empathize with the well-to-do victim, which wouldn't have been their inclination, and to imitate the Samaritan's mercy and admire his righteousness. That wouldn't have come easily either. There are many examples of how we all give or withhold mercy based on whether we identify with the person of, in need. Lots of research has been done on the selectivity that we all demonstrate in our empathy and mercy. It's not just how much we identify with someone on socioeconomic grounds, although that's important, but it's even more important how we perceive them being treated unjustly or unfairly. <clears throat> It also matters a lot if suffering has a face. While I felt terrible sadness and anger at the latest mass shooting in Highland Park, hearing the story of the two-year-old boy who lost, lost both his parents brought me to tears. Culture, status, and our experiences influence who we think of as our neighbor. It influences those we believe are worthy of our mercy. Jesus' listeners saw the robbers in a much more sympathetic light than we would. <coughs> Excuse me. They had to steal because there was no mercy for them in the hearts of those who taxed them out of their, the land that had been passed down for generations. But now that we know their story, are not our hearts softened towards them just a little? Jesus broadens the scope of the word neighbor. It's not just our family and friends, not just those who we know or those who, with whom we identify, and it's not just those that we may deem worthy of our notice and our compassion. Anyone in need of mercy is our neighbor, whether we like them or not. That is the moral of this particular parable. Showing mercy is not an act of like. It's an act of love. It's an act of sacrificial love. Thomas Merton says, our job is to love others without stopping to inquire whether or not they are worthy. This love itself will render both ourselves and our neighbors worthy. Knowing about God is good,
but doing as God does is better. As Jesus preached in the Beatitudes, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. May we make ourselves worthy of eternal life by the compassion that we feel and the mercy that we show. In Jesus' name we pray. Please stand as you are able and let us profess our faith in the tradition of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. And say with me, especially Marcus, this Richard, Bill, Bill Peter, Peter, Lou, Lou. Leslie, Leslie, the Anderson, Anderson family, family, Joan, Bob, Bob Randy, Randy, Matthew, Spencer, Spencer Reed, Vicky, Vicky, Ken, Carol, Carol Gail, Gail, and Chad, Doug, Doug Lisa, Lisa, Desiree, and, and Dylan, Dylan, and Rick. Give them courage and the hope in their troubles, and bring them to the joy of your salvation. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those killed and injured in the mass shooting in Highland Park. We also, and we pray for their families. We also pray for the shooter and his family, and as always, for an end to gun violence. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, our God, accept the prayers, fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And now at this time of offering, bring all that you are and all that you have. Enter God's courts with praise and thanksgiving.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and good and joyful always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us, and so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you, Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, 
Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with St. Martin of Tours and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, sorry, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Everyone is welcome at this holy table.
let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you always. Amen. announcements. Uh, as you can see, we made a slight adjustment to uh, communion procedure, uh, so as to uh, minimize, uh, you know, a lot of handing of, you know, a lot of hands on the host. Um, Bruce suggested, and I've adopted the fact, you know, that I will intinct first, and I will intinct rather than the chalice minister, and then give communion in that way. So we'll be doing that going forward. A um, couple of announcements. Um, there's going to be a trivia night on Saturday, uh, this Saturday, July 16th at 7 p.m. at the home of Dana and Thor. Please read the rest for details. Uh, we want to thank you for your continued support during this uh, challenging year uh, financially. And um, I'd like you to uh, uh, not forget us when you go on vacation. Um, it would be, you know, our bills are due 12 months out of the year. So um, it would be helpful if you would uh, pay before, you know, pay your pledge or whatever uh, before you go on vacation. Uh, that would help us meet our obligations in a timely manner. And again, we thank you for uh, your generosity throughout this year and um, safe travels to those of you who are traveling for vacation. <clears throat> uh, there's a combined family tree back to school drive uh, if you look on the back of your announcement sheet, uh, there are, these are the items that are being requested for both the kids at Family Tree and Melissa Beach's students, who's in the back of our sanctuary this morning, uh, in the Aurora Public School District. So please take a look at that. Um, there's a couple more things about stewardship and also our new expense form, so I'll leave that to you to read. Um, we do have uh, another question of the week. <laughs> um, for those of you who perhaps have been absent, we're asking a question every week, a discovery question of the week as part of our priest in charge process. Um, so you have today a yellow, uh, orange sticky note on the back of your announcement sheet. The question for this week is, what do you see as opportunities for St. Martin's. Um, as you could see in the narthex, we have the previous two weeks uh, responses, uh, the sticky notes uh, are there, and we have uh, this week's uh, to your right as you leave the church. So um, I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes uh, right now to just jot down some, some quick words. What do you see as opportunities for St. Martin's? And then I would ask that on your way out, you attach them to the uh, appropriate uh, piece of newsprint that's on the window. If you need any pens, they're in the back. Or maybe ushers can help if anyone needs a pen.
if you have more to add, uh, you're welcome to continue to fill out uh, your sticky note or grab another uh, at coffee hour. And for those parishioners that are watching on Facebook, on our live stream, uh, there are links in the weekly emails where you can answer the questions uh, equally anonymously uh, online. You can submit your answer and uh, we will receive it. Uh, when the process is done, you know, we'll sift through all the data. The priest in charge committee will look through all the data and uh, present a brief report uh, to the parish. All right, so I see we have uh, a couple of birthdays and a couple of anniversaries. So we have, uh, on Tuesday, we have Dave Clifford's birthday and Terry Flores's birthday. So if you two would come up. And today is Michelle and Bruce Raymond's anniversary. So if you would all come up, please. Okay. <laughs> Whatever works. <laughs> All right. So if you would turn to the birthday prayer on, uh, uh, in your worship bulletin, which I don't have in front of me <laughs> and should know. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Think of them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide in the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and be with you always. Amen. Happy birthday. Yay. And now for our anniversary couple. Let me get on your side here. Okay. Almighty God, giver of life and peace, continue to bless your servants' mutual affection that they may walk in the way of love and righteousness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend on both of you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Happy anniversary. Which anniversary is this? 40. 40 years. Oh. Wonderful. Since I already gave the blessing, we're heading straight into the <laughs> into our recessional hymn. Please stand for our recessional hymn. Give thanks to the Lord for his 
love never ends And all the people said amen Blessed are the poor in spirit Who are torn apart Blessed are the persecuted And the pure in heart Blessed are the people longing For another start For this is the kingdom The kingdom of God And all the people said amen Oh, 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 oh. And all the people said amen Give thanks to the Lord For his love never ends And all the people said amen And all the people said amen Oh, 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 oh. and all the people said amen Give thanks to the Lord For his love never ends And all the people said amen And all the people 